there, Mouseketeers. Welcome to the Disneyland Beat, where our toes tap to a Disneyland drum. And we always whistle while we work. Today, we're going to show you the Pacific Northwest Mouse Meet that just happened this past weekend. It's the largest and best Disney Park fan gathering this side of D23. In fact, D23 was there too. A Disney store and lots of Disney Park names. There were animators and Imagineers talking about all sorts of things, including Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway at Disneyland, Tiana's Bayou Adventures, Toy Story Land, and Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, among others. And we get to meet the voices of the Disneyland Resort and Mickey Mouse himself. We check out the vendors, the displays, the cosplay, and other fun content, and we get a backstage look as I helped run tech for the event. Come on and celebrate Disneyland with us. Like, subscribe, and stick around. Disneyland is your land. <laughs> Come seek an adventure at your pirates, eh? Make the jump to life, speed. Hi, I'm Amy. And I'm TC. The Pacific Northwest Mouse Meet happens every July, just north of Seattle, and it's been going on for years, and it's regularly had many of the biggest names in Disney parks. The first one that I was affiliated with, I ran tech, and I got to spend the day with revered Imagineer Joe Rohde, Moana and Princess and the Frog director Ron Clements, and Disneyland historian Jeff Curdy. And that was just the day prior to the event, so after that amazing experience, I was hooked. There's a rope drop in the morning, and the crowds are let into the meeting space to check out the displays, shop with the vendors, take pictures at pop-ups, and meet characters. There's also a charity raffle with incredible Disney Park-themed prizes. The first speaker of the day was Roger Gould. Roger is the creative director of Pixar theme parks, so he is involved with every aspect of Pixar's inclusion in the Disney parks. But he started as an animator on a film we are sure you all know about before going on to head the Pixar shorts department. The dream came true. I went to the Walt Disney Animation Studios and I worked on this movie, Hercules, and uh, my character was the Hydra uh, and brought this 30-headed beast to life. And then I ended up at Pixar Animation Studios uh, back in 2001. And I had this fun gig. I was a creative director of what we called our shorts group, which was directing all original animation outside of the features. So worked on a lot of short films like Mike's New Car and Bounden, as mentioned, and Jack Jack Attack. And it was just such a fantastic time to be there. There, were, there was just a spirit of just invention and creativity that was just thrilling every single day. Roger's first project in the park was Turtle Talk with Crush, a delightful attraction that really resonated with our son when he was younger. Roger went on to talk about two major projects. One was the creation of Remy Ratatouille Adventure and how he oversaw Pixar animators and Disney Imagineers working together. So it all began uh, because extraordinary Imagineer and amazing collaborator Tom Fitzgerald had this thought when he saw the film. He was really inspired by this scene in the movie where Remy has plunged to the floor of his fantasy. He's in Gusteau's kitchen and yet it turns out to be the most dangerous place that a rat could be. And Tom had this idea of could we make sort of the 21st century version of Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. And that seemed like a fun idea. First, whenever I'm collaborating with Imagineering on a project to bring our stories to life, if there's any original animation in the attraction, then I get to direct that animation. Uh, and Which is just crazy fun to, again, extend the worlds of these films. One of the fun things here, of course, is the world had been built out for the movie. So as we were storyboarding, for this attraction, and just like our films, we work out every single action in advance through lots and lots of drawings. Well, we had the 3D model of that world to work against, so we actually built our camera move and then had our story artists draw the characters over those story sketches so we could make sure that we were being honest about the physical experience that we could have. And in this story, Remy is trying to decide what he's going to cook for us, his rat friends, for a meal, but in his excitement, he trips and plunges along with us to the floor of Gusteau's, and we go on this crazy wild ride uh, through the floor of Gusteau's with our friend Linguini looking out for us, trying to make sure that we don't get you know, stepped on or pummeled along the way, but in his crazy way, he ends up causing even more chaos as he tries to avoid stepping on us. What's so fun for me is that when we're staffing one of these projects, we basically are, can pull from all the artists inside the studio. So just as they're cast to different movies, they get cast to our theme park projects. And what's so fun is that some of those people 
will have worked on the movie, and so they're coming back to work with old friends. And for some of them who didn't work on the film, it's like working with celebrity. I get to animate Remy, oh my God. And it's so great. He also discussed the creation of Toy Story Land, the whimsical land themed to Andy's backyard and imagination. And one of the crazy things about making an animated movie is it could take five or six years to make a film, but when you watch the film, you want to believe that every moment of the movie is happening spontaneously. When you're building a Toy Story Land, you want that same feeling. So there's you know, Jesse standing up on this tower of blocks and poor Rex on that top of Jenga blocks, but it all looks you know, twisted and kooky because Andy's not an engineer, he just stuck these blocks together and, and was playing around in his backyard. The coaster Slinky Dog Dash, in the queue there's this giant drawing that Andy did where he was figuring out how he was going to take his Dodge and Dash coaster kit and mix it with Slinky and use all of his other toys. And if you look at this, you can even see ideas that Andy ran out of money, I mean, uh, time for. And, <laughs> like the incredible uh, evil Dr. Porkchop intergalactic ship, which would have been fun. Okay, well, if we're gonna make a slinky coaster, it should be a slinky coaster. It should be the slinkiest coaster you've ever been on with curves that go around, twists that bring you around, uh, every, so, surprising you at every moment, like our films hopefully surprise you. And in fact, in the middle of this coaster, you come to a complete stop because you're at a power boost launch that you actually get pulled back and you can hear the spring pulling you back and you get released, but you're with Slinky and you're a toy, so he's alive and he's like, all right, everybody, hold on, and off you go through these final wonderful twists and curves leading you ultimately to our friend Wheezy who is going to remind you of the core emotional idea of Toy Story by singing You've Got a Friend in Me. It's been phenomenal and I love that I get to do this and thrilled that I'm going to keep doing it until they tell me to stop. Uh, and it's just, this is my team down at Pix, uh, uh, Disney Animation. Uh, this was the opening night of Drawn to Life out in Florida. It's just been amazing, but of course, best of all is to get to go to the parks and share it with my family. Oopsie. Sorry. I'll be done now. Okay, bye. Another fun aspect of the Mouse Meets are the videos that play before each speaker. I work with the delightful host and director of the event, Don Morin, to create two of the three films shown at the meet. One was a parody of the Tangled song, When Will My Life Begin? And the other was a remake of the soaring intro that Amy and Leander were part of as well. The second speakers of the day were a team, Sharita Carter and Kevin Rafferty. Sharita Carter is an Imagineer who was the lead on Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway with Kevin and is also currently working on Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Kevin Rafferty was the lead Imagineer on Cars Land, perhaps Disney's most successful immersive land, and the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror, Blizzard Beach, Typhoon Lagoon, among others, before recently retiring. Kevin and Sharita framed much of their talk as the pitch that they gave to everyone involved to get Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway approved and built. There he is right there. Hope you enjoy a relaxing tour around the park. And then we hear this, me, 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 me. And we see the little red car, fully dimensional, Mickey and Minnie in a fully dimensional, seven foot long car, drive into the scene next to you, alongside the train in which you're a passenger. Four cars, eight passengers per car. And, um, and Mickey, you know, calls out to everybody, hi, everybody, and Minnie says, hi, everybody. And, and uh, Goofy says, well, ho, they're making men. And Mickey says, take good care of our friends. And um, he says, hi, everybody, take good care of our friends. And Goofy says, gosh, they're with me. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> well, as Mickey says to Minnie, I must have hit that track switch. Minnie, we have to go after that runaway train. There's their mission, and now we've run away, and we're stampeding through the Old West. Next thing you know, we go into the next scene, and it's a carnival, and the theme song takes on the kind of a calliope carnival scene, and it's this beautiful, beautiful scene, and here comes a big twister. So a twister, there it is. Uh, elusive twister. So the twister takes Minnie and Minnie, Mickey and Minnie out of the scene. We follow them into the next scene where there's this uh, huge twister. And, uh, and then that blows us backwards into this huge contrast, kind of a, a soothing tropical, you know, near, near, near <laughs> thing. So after all that, there's like there's all this excitement and then just calm down. And we look down and we see Mickey and Minnie, ah! 
falling down and we follow them. Curse splash. And one, one two, two, three, three. One, one, two, three. And the dance cars, <laughs> where else in the world do you have dancing train cars, folks? And he says, hey, picnickers, I told you nothing was going to go wrong. And this was the image that Sharita showed you, the still image. And Mickey and Minnie have finally arrived at their picnic. Mickey's strumming the guitar, and they're singing this beautiful version of the theme song. And Pluto was there with their picnic basket, and it's happily ever after ending um, to this beautiful story. Sharita also showed us some really cool research that was done when developing the movable projection surfaces used on the ride. But we had done a lot with projection, where we were going in and we were building these beautiful dimensional sets, and then we were doing these amazing transformations digitally. But the day came when we asked the question, but what if the set itself, the physical set itself, transformed in conjunction with the digital set, what would that be like? And by the way, that has never happened before. <laughs> right. So. so yeah, it was one of those, the, those things that, like I said, we came up from a vision perspective. So what you're looking at now, and I'm really happy to be able to show this, because I'm pretty sure this is the first time we've been able to show this out in the wild, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> but what you are looking at, just very simply, you see a couple of A-frames um, like carbon fiber A-frames. They look like they have pillowcases on top of them, and they're just a little actuator motor. So I wanted to show you this to you because this was our, one of our first just um, experiments with what it would be like to change the dimensional set. So we're gonna just play that, and you can see what we came up with. Action. how crude we start out when we start our mock-ups. A lot of what we use to do that mock-up, you could probably get at Home Depot. But um, <laughs> what we did, did too. <laughs> some of it we did. But then when you add projection, and as you can see in the back, we've got a, a cyclorama that's flanking the, uh, the expanding pillowcases. But when you add um, projection, you get something that looks a little like this. Finally, they did talk a little bit about the version of Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway at Disneyland, which they had walked through already, and Tiana's Bayou Adventure, opening in late 2024. He wanted to tell you that um, Sharita and I, two weeks ago, yeah, about two weeks walked ago. through Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway at Disneyland. <laughs> and it is abs. I, I cried. Yeah. I did too, but <laughs> okay, yeah, it was just absolutely beautiful because like I said, when you put your heart and soul into an attraction and to be a part of being a creator and then to see another team take it and just do it with so much love and so much passion and, you know, they took a lot of our lessons learned and they just really, really did it and it really, really touched us both. Um, but I have to tell you, as Kevin mentioned in the city scene, you know, he lovingly gave a, 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 a quick tribute to me in the, in the city scene with the Carter's uh, cameras. But what the, the uh, Disneyland team did was <laughs> in the city, they have done a beautiful tribute to Kevin. And I don't know if we want to completely give it away, but it's what, it's what really made him <laughs> cry <laughs> because it's so beautifully done. And so I would just encourage you when you, you ride at Disneyland to, to look for it. But it, it's going to be great. You guys are going to yeah. love it. So what comes next for me is... <laughs> Thank you. 
And as you saw, Roger mentioned working with Roger in the studio and bringing this delightful attraction. We are reimagining Splash. It's going to be amazing. So many of you have come up to me already and told me how excited you are about it. And that just, I love hearing that. There's a couple of things that we wanted to do with this particular attraction. As many of you know, um, many of you were introduced to Princess Tiana um, as a result of the beautiful animated film. So we want to give you an opportunity to be reconnected with Tiana. But there's a whole new generation that we have this opportunity now to introduce her. So we're really excited about giving her this dimensional space, both at Disneyland and at Magic Kingdom at, in late 2024. And then finally, we want to do a love letter to the city of New Orleans, because the story of Tiana is fantastical, but it takes place in a real place. And I ran into a couple of people from New Orleans and people who have said they love the city. And one of our goals is just to take what's really special about that city and infuse it into this attraction. Action. So we can't wait to, to bring it to all of you. The charity auction for the awesome Disney items and memorabilia proceeds go to Ryman Arts. Ryman Arts, founded by Disney Imagineer Herb Ryman, is an educational art program that provides free art training to motivated students. The Meet has a long history with Mr. Ryman, who fairly recently passed away. The rest goes to the Seattle Children's Hospital. And a huge congratulations to all the winners. The final speakers for the day worked as a trio, and they are all important voice actors in the Disneyland community. Bill Rogers has long been the voice of Disneyland, whom you hear every morning at Rope Drop, during park announcements before shows, and also on many attractions. And Camille Dixon does the same job as the voice of Disney California Adventure. The third actor and the main focus of the session was Brett Iwan, the current voice of Mickey Mouse. He gave an excellent and emotional talk about his journey to become Mickey Mouse. Hello, everybody at the Pacific Northwest Mouse Meet. It's great to be here, and I hope you're having a swell time practice a little bit. Of course, I called my brother and I uh, called my parents and uh, my parents hate that I tell this part of the story, but I called and, you know, my mom's like, hi, what's going on? I'm like, oh my gosh, mom, I got this email and I'm going to audition for Mickey Mouse. And she's like, uh, what? <laughs> okay. She's like, I thought you did a better Donald voice than Mickey. <laughs> I've never done Donald's voice, never. So I don't know where she got that from. We got your audition. We loved what you did. We're doing callback auditions. We'd love to have you into the studio. So what part of California are you in? Are you up at Pixar or down here at the studio? And I was like, oh, crap. I, I said, well, I'm actually in Kansas City, Missouri. You know where Walt got his start. I'm just like blocks away from his original <laughs> studio. Um, uh, Rusi Taylor was everything you wanted in an actress who was performing Minnie Mouse. And essentially, she was Minnie Mouse. She's Without doubt. She sounded I, just like her. I remember sitting in a studio with Wayne next to me. Rusi is out in the, in, the, in the studio itself, and she is singing in the mini voice in Italian. <laughs> Rusi spoke like six or seven say, languages. That was just one of the six languages yeah, she spoke. Yeah, exactly. And Insane. Wayne looked at me and he goes, you know, Sometimes I feel like such a schlub. <laughs> <laughs> I think anyone who was around Rusi felt that way. Um, but on top of that, they always felt loved because she was the most loving and caring person. And she had the best hugs, the type of hugs that almost left you feeling slightly uncomfortable because you, you started to let go and she was like, no, not yet, honey. <laughs> and you just stood there in her embrace and it was wonderful. Um, I, I count myself very lucky to have worked with her and gotten to know her and call her a friend. Um, where was I? Um, so I forget where I was in the story. Anyway, I got cast as Mickey Mouse at the end. <laughs> Brett also shared with us what an accomplished artist he is and the classic Freddie Moore-styled Mickey art that he is now producing for Disney. This piece I created for the last D23 Expo, uh, which coincided with Mickey's 90th birthday. Um, and so I wanted to depict Mickey um, getting off the train in Hollywood, uh, much like Walt did when he left Kansas City and moved to LA, much like I did when I left Kansas City and drove to LA. Um, so I chose to depict Mickey from Mr. Mouse Takes a Trip, uh, wearing his little his straw hat and having the, the MM suitcase, and he's getting off the train in Hollywood, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. He's yet to be jaded by all that Hollywood has to offer. Of posters, there's been a poster series based on my love of national parks and travel, um, and kind of combining that with my love of Mickey. So I've been depicting Mickey visiting all these different parks, 
Um, so far, we've got Yosemite, Sequoia, Yellowstone, Joshua Tree, Bryce. Um, and what I'm most excited about is this poster line has opened the doors to do other art. Um, and I'm not sure if I'm supposed to talk about this yet, but this seems like a safe space. So I will announce that. No, goes no further than here. Okay. Ever. Uh, if, you're, if you have any plans to stay at the Grand Californian Hotel in the near future, um, I was asked and very honored to create an original poster for the Grand Californian that will now be given out to every guest who visits the resort. Um, very nice. Thank you. And overall, it just was a really magical day and wonderful fan gathering. We hope you join us at the Pacific Northwest Mouse Meet next July. Well, that's it for today. Thanks so much for joining us. See you real soon, Mouseketeers. We'll see you real soon. 